Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Today we have a very special guest, Dinesh D'Souza, who is the movie producer of Death of a Nation. Dr. Anthony Harper, our White House correspondent, has a news-breaking interview. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we normally like to report the news, discern the spirits, and pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. But today we have a special interview with Dinesh D'Souza, who is the Hollywood movie producer of many movies, but his most, most recent is called Death of a Nation. It details the history of America up until the time of President Trump. And do the leftist accusations against President Trump make any sense in the context of World War II and the Nazi Holocaust? Or President Abraham Lincoln and the Civil War and slavery? Do the leftists make any sense? Well, Dinesh D'Souza exposes their lies. Here is a tra trailer of Death of a Nation, followed by his interview with Dr. Anthony Harper. Lincoln was elected to unite a country and stop slavery. Democrats smeared him, went to war against him, assassinated him. Now, their target is Trump. America was never Trump wins the presidency. So help me God. They say he's killing America. There will be a vote to impeach. They say he's a racist. This was a white lash. And a fascist. Who are the real racists? Northern Democrats had conspired together with Southern Democrats to take away the fruit of other people's labor. Who are the real fascists? Both Mussolini and Hitler set up and ran welfare states. This was done by the do-gooders, the liberals, the people who wanted to improve society. Which party attacks our free speech? How dare you speak against the villa? Our religious liberty and our personal safety. A nation dies when its people are not free. We too must fight for freedom regardless of the price we pay. An end in terror is preferable to a terror with no end. The stakes could not be higher. We're talking about America, the greatest nation on earth. Lincoln saved America for the first time. It's now up to us to save America a second time. I'm Dr. Anthony Harper here at the Intermountain Christian News, and I meet with Mr. Dinesh D'Souza. Uh, Mr. D'Souza, it's great to visit with you, and uh, there are a lot of uh, challenging issues in America, especially in light of uh, your recent documentary entitled Death of a Nation. would encourage people to check out uh, more information about and, and to view that uh, great documentary, Death of a Nation, and of course, previous ones that you've done, uh, Hillary's America. Uh, imagine America, imagine a world without her. And then the first one uh, that caused a lot of problem was uh, Obama's America 2016. And uh, you've gone through a, through a lot and you've been, you've been a blessing to meeting uh, Christians here in America. That, uh, actually, they wanted me to tell you uh, how much they appreciate you. So um, they you. enjoyed your documentary so much, especially with uh, this latest one, A Death of a Nation. Uh, you were talking about some similarities between President Lincoln and President Trump. And at the very end of that documentary, you had mentioned about uh, it might be a good idea for to uh, President Trump to follow Lincoln's example. Uh, we are clearly in a, in a civil, uh, serious civil chaos here in America. America is a very nation that is divided. And I wanted you to respond to it, uh, and I'm, I'm sure you're aware of what President Lincoln said in his proclamation we had talked about before, uh, that Lincoln, uh, in his assessment of America, uh, it, said, uh, it really said that uh, America is a nation that has forgotten God. That we have uh, we've become too proud and too arrogant and too self-reliant. 
And uh, he quoted from the book of Psalms, uh, where it says, only of those nations blessed whose God is the Lord. He even called on a time of national <clears throat> repentance. And so a lot of Christians in America see that solution to our national crisis. And what, when Lincoln had to say in that proclamation that, that we need to be a nation that honors the Lord and also a turning away from wickedness, uh, as Lincoln said, confessing our many national sins. So I'd like your response to uh, many Christians in America, they're concerned about what Lincoln had to say. Well, I think we see with Lincoln a, a progression as the Civil War unfolds, a deepening awareness that uh, all of this is somehow part of God's providential plan. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I think Lincoln was very troubled by the fact that there were preachers on both sides, in the South and in the North, making opposite cases for the war and both appealing to the same God and saying God's mm -hmm. on our side. Right. And um, Lincoln had to wrestle with this theologically. And, um, and Lincoln came to the view that God's purposes is not always known. Uh, but uh, one can be sure that God's justice and his mercy are both wrapped into this conflict. And so we see in Lincoln this sort of, he begins to speak almost like an Old Testament prophet as the war goes on. Uh, we see this uh, in the second inaugural uh, and certainly in, in Lincoln's later life. Uh, so yes, I think that Lincoln saw uh, not only America as uh, providentially ordained by God, but the American people as being sustained by, um, by fidelity to God's uh, will. Mm -hmm. We are, as I said earlier, we're just a nation that is so divided, and uh, we've got a crucial midterm election coming up, a lot of concerns. We hear the left, uh, you know, the fake news people talking about, uh, oh, that uh, the Democrats are going to win in some major way. You know, just like they ignored the reality that there was, under, there was an underswell of people that were just fed up with the politically correct. And they refused to admit that uh, any possible uh, opportunity for President Trump to win. So um, in light of all this civil unrest and, uh, you know, this upcoming midterm election, any ideas about uh, about how America get back get back, get back on track again, uh, in addition to what Lincoln had to say. Well, I think the big challenge for Trump is to is to strengthen the spine of the Republican Party. Uh, we see it going on in the Kavanaugh hearings. Mm -hmm. All kinds of chaos, all kinds of incivility. People being uh, um, not only the protesters, but the protesters being organized and egged on by the Democrats who are behind the desk. So this is an organized campaign, and Republicans can either lie down and get walked over or be tough about it. Now, when Lincoln was elected, the Republicans around him, they were, they were we call them rhinos, or Republicans in name only, mm -hmm. and they were uh, urging Lincoln to, to bend, to give in, to, to abandon the Republican platform. But Lincoln said, no, I'm not doing it. We just had an election, we put all this before the American people. Once they voted for it, Lincoln goes, it's their mandate, it's not mine. I have to carry it out. Mm -hmm. um, it's their mandate, not mine, and I have to carry it out. So Lincoln saw his job as executing this democratic mandate that had come through the American people. Okay. Well, I just, just briefly, just a few moments ago, talked about the fake news issue. And, and uh, very serious problem. President Trump is concerned about that. Uh, I get to experience firsthand in the White House press room a lot of tension between uh, mainstream media and uh, faith-based media. So what, what is the concern that you might have about fake news? Well, I'm concerned with uh, fake news in the sense that there is uh, there's distortion in the way that the events of the day are portrayed, and that has become more obvious and more blatant uh, under Trump. It was bad under Reagan, but it's gotten much worse. But even more than fake news, I'm concerned with fake history and fake scholarship, uh, mm -hmm. fake narratives about America. These are what young people learn in school and they learn in college. This is our kind of conventional wisdom about how America came to be. Uh, and embedded in that are, now see, fake news is not that hard to catch in the sense that, let's say, for example, they, um, someone makes a claim about a factual event. The, the troubles in Benghazi were caused by a video. Well, you can look and see if that's true. Oh, it's not true, okay. Or you, if you want to keep your doctor, you can keep your doctor. Well, that's, right. that's easy to check. But if somebody says something like, fascism is on the right, and therefore Trump and the, the conservatives are the true fascists. Christians and patriots are the true fascists. Well, that requires a whole knowledge of history, who the fascists were, Mussolini, Hitler, the Nazi platform. Uh, and so busting up that big lie is much more difficult because it requires much more than just, let's just see if this event was caused by that event. 
Uh, and so a lot of my work in movies and books is, is aimed at deconstructing these false narratives that are put out by the left. Yeah, you know, uh, fake in line with the fake news issues, a lot of people are concerned about that it's really the, the true definition is not really being addressed. And, and I've seen it and had a response from a lot of Christians that basically these news sources don't support our Judeo-Christian values. Well, that's putting it mildly. The, I think it's, it's more than that, because it, if they were just, let's say, say they were secular, they didn't believe in Christianity, but they were constrained by Christian ethics, you might say, the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. they, the sense of fairness, of civility. But no, I think we're far beyond that. We're at a point where there's a breakdown, not just a belief in Christianity, but a belief in the rules of decorum that govern democratic debate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, these guys, uh, these Antifa thugs who roam the campuses driving out speakers, they have the approval of powerful people in Hollywood and the media and the Democratic Party. So there's a licensing of this kind of illiberal behavior. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the challenge for conservatives, the Christians, is because by and large we're the party that wants to meet the other side halfway, is how do you deal with this? How do you deal with a party when you won't do the, the things to them that they will do to you? And therefore, you have no way to stop them because it works for them. If, uh, if an Antifa horde can keep Condoleezza Rice from speaking on a campus, they count that as a success. Um, and so how do, we, how do you defeat those kinds of tactics? That, it seems to me, that's the ethical dilemma faced by conservatives and Christians today. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. How can you discern the thoughts in your own mind from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit or from angels or from invisible demons? I'm Dr. Chaps and you've seen us on this show talk about the gift of discerning of spirits. Maybe you know that I wrote my PhD dissertation entitled How to See the Holy Spirit and Angels and Demons. And it's all about this important topic of receiving the gift of discerning of spirits. How can you discern the thoughts that come to you? How do you know to learn to hear the voice of God and discern that from the demonic voice which tempts us to sin? Well, this is an important skill and it will change your ministry. It'll change your life, which is why we've created now not just a book, but a 17 part video Bible study on a four disc DVD set that we would like to send to you and your church and your family and your small group. This important Bible study series goes through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How did Jesus discern the spirits? How did the Apostle Paul discern the spirits? What does the Old Testament say about demons and the Holy Spirit and angels? When you learn to discern, it will transform your life and your ministry. Please visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and get this important video resource. Or call us toll free at 866-Obey-God and for a suggested donation of $99, we'll give you the entire 17 part Bible study series for just $99. And if you order today, we'll throw in the book for free. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org or call us toll free at 866-Obey-God. Get this important Bible study series for your family. Call today. Defending your religious freedom. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. I'm joined now by Dr. Anthony Harper, who is live with us via Skype. Anthony, welcome back to the program. Uh, thank you. Great to join you again. So Dr. Anthony Harper is leader of IMC News and you are our roving White House press correspondent, but you recently traveled to San Diego and we just saw your interview with Dinesh D'Souza Give us a recap, why did you fly to San Diego? Uh, I thought it would be so it would be very important to uh, meet with Dinesh D'Souza in light of his recent movie or documentary called Death of a Nation. Uh, very uh, detailed uh, account of uh, why America's so messed up and uh, bringing President Lincoln into the picture. It would be good to, uh, to get a, uh, you know, in-person uh, interview with him, and I uh, thank God that happened. Uh, flying down to San Diego to meet with him, uh, and uh, what a blessed time to you know discuss uh, Lincoln's solution uh, for getting America back on track. And we also talked about fake news issues. 
Well, we've been very uh, avid followers of Dinesh D'Souza over the years. He's been a guest on our show in the past. Uh, but this new movie, Death of a Nation, really traces the criticism of President Trump by the far leftist movement who compare Christians to Nazis for supporting President Trump. And of course, his movie just debunks that entire theme. Uh, have you seen the movie? Do you think it's effective? I've, I've seen the movie and it's very effective. Uh, at the very end, uh, he, he, he calls on President Trump to follow Lincoln's example. He didn't spell out what Lincoln's example was, really, um, in, in bringing a solution to America. So we talked about in that in my interview, uh, specifically what Lincoln had to say in his proclamation of 1863 in the middle of the Civil War. Uh, he said that America is a nation that has forgotten God. We have become too proud and arrogant and self-reliant. And he uh, quoted scripture from Psalms, only blessed are those nations whose God is the Lord. He was calling for a time of national repentance, turning from uh, our many national sins. And, and that's why I talked with Dinesh D'Souza about, specifically about Lincoln's example, uh, a call to repentance in our nation honoring the Lord. I think you're right, and I think you're onto something. Anthony, you are a White House press reporter. You have a press badge, and we've covered you from the White House press room many times. But you talk with Dinesh D'Souza about the fake news industry that reports negatively all the time about President Trump and never has a positive thing to say. What was your interaction with Dinesh about fake news? Uh, well, um, he agreed that we have a, a true fake news problem. He, he uh, actually took the definition of it at a deeper level than, than I had originally in that. And uh, what I uh, mentioned to him was that fake news uh, doesn't support our Judeo-Christian values. And he says, well, that's an understatement. <laughs> uh, and uh, to, to go into, to say that they truly are not Christian people. Um, and, uh, you know, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Uh, so, you know, if you could do research, uh, if you do a survey of all the fake news uh, sources that we have, uh, rarely would you find any of those fake news sources being pro-life and supporting uh, and uh, uh, going against abortion or standing for uh, godly marriage. Uh, it would be interesting research about that, which I plan to do. Well, I think you're right. We've seen a lot of wild leftist attacks from not only the New York Times and Washington Post, but especially the liberal cable networks like MSNBC and CNN. In fact, President Trump tweets against them from time to time, exposing their hypocrisy. But you were recently in the White House press room and you interacted with Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who I'm told is now one of the top 10 most admired women in America. She is very respected by mm -hmm. the public and yet she is hated by the fake news reporters that sit in the White House press room. Have you seen their interactions? I've seen those interactions on several occasions and uh, it is a very tense situation in a, a White House daily uh, press a briefing room there. Um, and, but a little confusing to me, uh, why Sarah Sanders continues to respond to their questions and, and it doesn't seem to do any good because they just spin it around and uh, they lie anyway. Uh, so I'm advocating for uh, Sarah Sanders to call upon me and other Christian media more and put us on the front row. Uh, we are the ones that are gonna re be reporting the truth and, and uh, playing to, to the lowest denominator is not helping at all. Well, I think you're right on that front. I, think, I remember when President Barack Obama took the first question in his White House briefing, he called upon the Huffington Post and put them in the front row. Of course, that's a far left liberal newspaper. Uh, if you even call it a newspaper, it's just yeah. an online blog. Uh, but why doesn't the president call on Christian or con at least conservative reporters like Breitbart or World Net Daily or the Drudge Report? Why don't they put, uh, the non-fake news in the front row, including yourself, Dr. Anthony Harper. 
Well, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I really want to uh, ask uh, and that. I've asked the, the White House. They haven't had a response to that issue. And uh, we need to get that answer, you know, especially in light of, uh, you know, President Trump owes Christians tremendous. Uh, and we need to have our voice there on that front row. I mean, CNN is not sharing our values. Uh, the way they have been disrespectful towards Sarah, they should be bumped to the back row. And uh, we can take that place. You know, obviously, President Trump would uh, maybe consider having a dilemma by, um, you know, just having our Christian newspaper voice there. Um, we have other uh, news sources that would want to be uh, clamoring for that seat as well. It could be a rotating seat of uh, Christian media, that being one day uh, Christian radio, one day Christian newsprint, such as our newspaper, uh, the other day uh, Christian television. Uh, but, you know, with uh, Deseret News, the, the LDS news service, uh, and Catholic radio, they, they see themselves as Christians as well, and, and they, they would want to be on that rotating seat. And so that, would, that could create a dilemma. I think you're right. Let's take a short break. When we come back, I'll ask Dr. Anthony Harper about the latest from Israel. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Are you frustrated at the direction your country is headed? Are you ready to fight for a cause and change the world? Do you believe God has called Christians to make a difference? Announcing a new book by Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt entitled How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, a step-by-step -step guide to take back your country. Dr. Alan Keyes wrote the foreword saying, this book needs to be placed in the hands of every millennial and Bible-believing pastor in America. In How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, Gordon Klingenschmidt equips you with 30 powerful political tools in a 30-day devotional. His 15 inspiring true stories of political victory prove the effectiveness of these methods. You don't even need to get elected to take back your government. By becoming the media, gathering petitions, building an army, and prayerfully fighting the right enemy, you can reverse bad laws and help establish the kingdom of God right now. But if you read this book, you just might get elected too. Order your copy today. It's available in the Superstore at WND.com on Amazon, and you can get the first chapter free right now if you visit the website schooloflibertyorg Again, that's schooloflibertyorg That's schooloflibertyorg It's time to take back your country. Defending your religious freedom. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. We have just about five minutes left with Dr. Anthony Harper. Anthony, when you were in Washington recently, you attended the Christians United for Israel Conference, generally led by Reverend John Hagee, who comes to Washington a few times a year. What did you see? Uh, well, um, it, it was uh, very historic. Uh, what I saw was, uh, you know, expression of elation about President Trump's uh, decision to move the U.S. Embassy uh, to uh, Jerusalem, which uh, I feel so blessed uh, to have been there in person uh, to witness that. Um, you know, and another key thing was uh, Pastor John Hagee uh, denouncing UNRWA, which we've talked about on previous programs, and, and UNRWA stands for United Nations Relief Workers Agency, and uh, we've heard President Trump condemn UNRWA. And good news uh, recently that President Trump, uh, as of last week, has pulled all funding of UNRWA. And I, I saw the news uh, just uh, the other day about the PLO uh, office from Washington, D.C. Uh, being removed as well. Um, many uh, Jewish people are so elated with, it, with this news. And uh, I know well, Prime Minister of Israel... I think this is a credit to your asking questions in the White House about the UN Relief Workers Agency because you have been pounding this story for the past year to try to ask why are American tax dollars funding Palestinian education to teach children to hate Jews and to hate Israel. And so the more you ask that, and our credit also goes to Senator Risch of Idaho, your friend, uh, because they continue right. to work behind the scenes with uh, you know, uh, Secretary of State and, and with the uh, now uh, Ambassador Brownback who is 
demanding religious freedom over there, but you are one of the leaders on that issue and now you have seen a success and a victory. Do you think US taxpayer dollars will be restored to Palestine or is this a permanent solution? Uh, this is a permanent solution. It's very unlikely though that uh, UNRWA is going to reform itself, or you know, PLO is going to reform itself, or Hamas. You know, there's always possibility that they could get saved. Uh, it's not God's will that anyone perish. You know, I do pray for salvation for everyone, uh, but I, I don't see the behavior by Abbas and the Hamas leaders or Hezbollah of any sign of repentance or any respect for Israel and honoring Israel. And until that happens, there's no. Uh, there's no uh, opportunity for discussion. And, and, and I don't want people to think, and I know you agree, is that uh, Israel cannot be divided. Uh, we know in the, the prophet Joel talks about God's judgment uh, uh, for those nations that divide up his land. So for President Trump or anyone else to think about any division of Israel for an agreement is out of the question. I think you're right. Anthony, we're out of time, but I wanna say congratulations on enrolling in the PhD in communications program at Regent University. And also we wish you well on this new documentary that you are involved with to support Israel. And I know you're gonna do a great job with that. Would you take a moment to pray well, with me? Uh, Let's go I ahead. would love to, I thank God, I thank God for, uh, first of all, for these opportunities in the White House to bring up this UNRWA issue and for all the outcome. Amen to that. Let's take a moment and pray for Israel. Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name that you would continue to give victory after victory to your people and your nation, your chosen people, the Jews, and uh, your chosen nation, Israel. And Father, as far as America can stand with them, Father, I pray for the Trump administration that they will continue to do so in Jesus' name, amen. All right, our Amen. guest has been Dr. Anthony Harper. His website, imcnews.org. Again, that's imcnews, or is it .com? Tell me. .org. imcnews.org. Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Please donate when you visit. If you need prayer today, call us at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. Today I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.